Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin and the Fear and Greed Index. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the Fear and Greed Index is, is actually not one of my indicators. I'll provide a link to the website where you can follow it down in the description below. But the general idea is that we sort of sway back and forth from being fearful to being greedy. Now, as you guys have probably experienced over the last four months, it can be an extreme fear for weeks on end, even with the price dropping. So you could see it at an extreme fear in uh, like 49K, and then a few weeks later, you could still see an extreme fear at 39K, and so on and so forth. So in terms of a raw value, it, it might not be as useful, it sort of tells you what you already know, like if the price is going down, obviously people are fearful, the price is going up, obviously people are greedy. One of the things we can do though, is we can say, well, what if we, so here, here's basically the fear and greed index, by the way, color coded um, over the price. Okay, so we have the price on the primary y-axis on a logarithmic scale, and it's color coded by the fear and greed index. So it sort of does a good job, I think, of sort of showing what I just said. You can also see that in late 2020 and early 2021, we saw the fear and greed index at, at times in the 90s, even when the price of Bitcoin was still below its prior all-time high. So if you had sold all your Bitcoin just because the fear and greed index was flashing 95 at 19.71K back on December 1st, 2020, you would have obviously missed what came after it. So it's not necessarily the most useful in terms of looking at, at the, you know, the certain raw value of it. And also in the, in the downtrend, you can sort of see a similar thing. However, as I've said before, that doesn't mean it's not useful. Sometimes you just have to mine the data a little bit to, to find something that might be a bit more useful. And one of the things we often do with a lot of other things, we just look at moving averages, right? So one of the things we can do is we can first look at a seven day moving average. And why don't we just go ahead and just look at that seven day moving average. This is what it looks like. And it does a better job of sort of showing some of the trends but it's still not, it's still not you know, as, as good as we might want to get it. What if we switch it to 90-day? I really like looking at this metric on the 90-day moving average. So you're essentially looking at like a three-month moving average of the fear and greed index. And with the most recent pullbacks below the bull market support band that have lasted, as we said, you know, three to six months, one lasted three months, and the second one lasted four months, having a 90-day moving average of the fear and greed does seem to be a, a good way to, to, to look at it. One of the things you'll notice is that the 90-day SMA of the fear and greed has actually never gone below approximately 24, 25, somewhere around that area, 24, 25. We saw that at the very end of, of 2018. Okay, you can see we, we went all the way down to like 24.43 for the 90-day moving average in February of 2019. So it was a bit of a lagging indicator because it sort of takes people a while to to start to feel greedy again after the bottom has fallen out with a 40 or 50 percent capitulation but this is what we saw and during this phase over here we're sort of in a downtrend with a 90-day moving average of the fear and greed index we were putting in lower highs and and we were also sort of putting in um, a lot of lower lows as well until ultimately we we broke out of it back up to the upside but in the same manner we also have seen before where it's bottomed at around 26 or so all right, so we saw that back in, in, in 2020, where, where this fear and greed index, the 90-day of it bottomed around 26. What's interesting is that if you look at the fear and greed index and where it bottomed in the summer, it bottomed in early August. So it missed the, you know, it missed the actual bottom by, uh, the price bottom by a couple of weeks or so. But what it does show is that when the 90 day moving average is say below 30 or something like if it's below 30 as long as you have the right outlook right as long as you're not thinking that it has to go up tomorrow because if you find yourself in some type of situation like let's say 2018 it, it could still be a few months away but historically speaking when the 90 day moving average of the fear and greed index is below 30 it tends to be a, a fairly attractive area to sort of move into the market. One of the things we've discussed are, you know, are, are, are when the market is bullish and when the market is bearish. And overwhelmingly, it seems like most people just want to buy when the market is bullish. But really, if history is an indication, buying when the market is bearish tends to work out a lot better. Because when you're buying when the market is bearish, sort of buying when most people don't want to, 
typically the herd gets things wrong over over a longer over a longer time frame and so it, it, it would make sense in general if history is an indication of dca bitcoin when the market is bearish and just sort of wait for it to turn back to the you know back bullish which it historically always has done okay so looking at the 90-day moving average of this metric you can see that it's actually been below that 30 threshold um essentially since mid-february okay and we're still below it even now we're still below it again it is a lagging indicator so it's not going to it's not going to work out perfectly if the price of bitcoin were to come back down i imagine the fear and greed index could still hang out below 30 for a while but if the price continues to sort of slowly move up like it has been then we we should see the fear and greed index come back up higher on the 90-day moving average we can also quickly take a look at it on say a a exponential moving average an ema and if we look at the 90 day on the ema the 90 day ema of the fear and greed index it tells a fairly similar story although there are a couple of differences noting there are some of the main differences between say late 2018 we can see that we actually were, were coming a lot lower especially as we got later on and then we also went lower back in in um in april of 2020. this time though what i find interesting is that the 90-day EMA bottom that we just saw was also the same bottom that we saw at the bottom of the summer lull, which also occurred just with a, within a few days of the actual price bottom. So the price bottomed, uh, I think, on like July 20th or so. The 90-day EMA of the Fear and Greed Index actually bottomed about six days later or so. So not a bad catch i mean again it is a lagging indicator but the nice thing about ema is where they react a bit a bit quicker but you can also see that it bottomed here at approximately 30.83 and then recently you can see it bottomed at around 30.75 or so i mean we're probably not getting these exact i mean but you get the idea right around 30 30.83 30.8 and this one was also around 30.8 if you round or maybe 30.7 when or for 30.73 so it's interesting because you look at these things and you say, well, it sort of bottomed at the same area uh, that the one over here did. So interesting indicator. You know, this is one of the things we don't talk about a lot on the channel, the fear and greed index, because again, the raw values can be can really be kind of hit or miss, but it doesn't mean you can't mine the data and, and find something that might be a bit more useful. And when you do this, I think it does provide a more useful way to look at the market. And to just really recognize that when it's fearful, when you're fearful, when the market is overwhelmingly fearful, doesn't mean the floor can't fall out, right? It does not mean that. There's always a downside risk. But as long as you have the conviction to just sort of keep DCAing through it, it tends to be only a matter of time before things shift back the other way. Okay. So even even over here, when we started to come back down, it, it can really it can be really difficult to DCA through these phases, but you just have to be patient because eventually things historically they shift back the other way. Same thing during the summer lull, right? Same thing here. Eventually, it shifted back the other way. Where we find ourselves, you know, we found ourselves in a very similar position over the last several months, where the 90-day has been the 90-day EMA and the SMA has been relatively low for quite a while. Kind of sucks to, to DCA during those phases, especially when it seems like the price could just go back down. But ultimately, as long as you have the right time frame, it, it historically has worked out relatively well. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. You can access this chart as well as at least the you know the, the the moving averages and whatnot of this chart through the website into the cryptoverse.com we also have a lot of other charts as well make sure you guys check it out a lot of on-chain charts social metrics roi charts regression charts strategy dashboard telegram channels etc so make sure you guys check it out into the cryptoverse.com we have a sale you can lock in the lower rate thank you guys for tuning in subscribe and i'll see you next time bye